First guest, who doesn't really need an introduction, uh, John Reese Davies. Greetings to you all. So, thank Mike you. Mike the Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's kind of messed up right now. A little bit humid. Sweat like a pig. I swear, it's so hot outside. Um, so, uh, please, for the people who don't know, please tell us what you do. I, well, I, I, I am a, a, an actor by trade and um, a, and sometime producer and uh, as yet unpublished writer. Heartbreak, really. Heartbreak. If I'd had a real life, I could have had a proper job and grown up, but I didn't. So there you have it. All right. Um, uh, before I open the floor, can you just uh, tell us how this your whole career started? Real quick, give us a little, little recap. Um, I grew up in Africa and then got sent back to England as a federal youth to be educated. I hated England, I hated my boarding school, I hated school, and I, 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 I didn't much like the world, actually. But my school, being a good school, found some sort of talent that I had and encouraged me to do it. And one of the things they found they could do was to act, and particularly to handle fairly complex ideas in verse, like Shakespeare. And once I had Shakespeare, I had the words to articulate my rage. You common cry of curds, I banish you. And that at the age of 11 or 12 doesn't come out quite that powerfully, but you know, <laughs> it, it certainly um, is the thing to try to say to a schoolmaster when he's confining you to detention or something like this. Anyway, so that's where I started. Then I went to the University of East Anglia in its very first year, and uh, deliberately, because then I could found the Dramatic Society and grab all the best parts. And then I taught for a year and went to the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. Left on Sunday night, started in the theater Monday morning. Had seven weeks out of work in the first five years, did a bit at the Royal Shakespeare Company, and, uh, and did some great English television, including I Claudius and the Naked Civil Servant, and then Shogun eventually, and Victoria, and Raiders of the Lost Ark. And, uh, it was always my intention to be a writer. Uh, the theory was that, that since all actors are out of work for at least half the year, that's when I would be writing the masterpieces for which you would now be uh, acclaiming me. But in fact, I, I worked almost constantly. Um, I used to attribute this to my natural genius, of course, but then I realized that if you're tall, fat, and ugly, and you have a loud voice, you are in a seller's market. And uh, that just about encapsulates my entire career. You're so, I, I could listen to you for hours. Your voice is magical. Um, the floor is open for questions now. So, hey, uh, Kevin Morrison, movieified NYC.com. Um, Disney recently announced Indiana Jones 5, and since you were in Raiders of the Lost Ark and Indiana Jones in The Last Crusade, has there been any talk of you returning as Sala? And if not, would you like to? Mr. Spielberg, sir. Now, um, let's look. One, two, three, four, and uh, possibly five. Now, what is there in two and four that's missing and doesn't make them quite as wonderful as one and three. I don't know, I, and that's the point at which Stephen smiles. The truth of the matter is they haven't got a script yet, um, and it really depends on where they're going to locate it. Um, so it, it's really up in the air. I think they would be, I think there is still a, a public fondness for old Salah. But you understand that the world has changed. Um, Salah is possibly the last popular Arab figure in Western culture. Um, the world has changed. And perhaps the man in the fez is no longer as welcome uh, as he was in a, in a time of, more, of, of greater innocence. I like to think he is because there are real heroes in the other world. My time life 
man of the year would have been Walid al-Assad, who died beheaded at the age of what, 8082, um, defending his museum at Palmyra from the savages, from the barbarians, who would destroy knowledge and culture in the interests of their ideology. Walid al-Assad, certain, if there is an afterlife, I'm sure that he's there and doing well. Bless you, my boy, bless you. Any other questions? Yes, the answer is yes, obviously. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, well, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to know personally, as an actor, uh, is there any role that you particularly like doing and wish to continue doing? Maybe a second time, third time, fourth time? Uh, the part that I look forward to next is the next part. <laughs> and I made it happen. Um, you understand that there is no career structure for, act, for, for actors. I have been one of the most fortunate actors in the world because I work constantly. Um, and because I work constantly, you begin to recognize me and you begin to think, yeah, you know, he's, he's a survivor, he's, he's okay. But there is no reason why the phone should ever go again for John Reese Davis. And one day the phone will never go again. And I'll be sitting at home saying, well, you know, uh, uh, my manager says it, it's very quiet in LA these days, but you know, there, there's an awful lot in the pipeline, you know, that, that there are still a few inquiries. And I won't realize, I won't know that I have played my last part. Now apply this to your own lives. Uh, your broadcasters. There is some sort of career structure for you, some sort. But essentially, we are all self-employed people. We depend on others for our, our employment. And, and there's no guarantee of it. You know, nobody says, oh, you are owed a living. So how do we cope with that insecurity? My way of coping with it is, is assuming that the job that I am doing next is the last job. It is, after that, the phone will not ring. There will be no more parts for John B. Stavis. And so I go into the job thinking, this is it, this is my last one. So I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. And more than that, I'm going to make life easier for my fellow actors and my producer and director. You know, I'm going to go out and they'll say, you know what, I worked with him and God, he was so, he was so, such a generous spirit. Uh, and and if, if we adopt that as one of the mechanisms of our, 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 our working lives, then we create, we create a better world around us, but we also create a better career for ourselves. And, 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 and we influence other people. Young actors, when they, when they start off, are often very competitive. You know, it's about whether he's had more camera time on this than I have. And it isn't about that. It's about servicing a story. It's helping the picture be made. It's helping it unfold. It's learning that at most times in, in pictures, there is a point at which things start to go wrong and people get panicky and dismayed. And that's the time to say, it happens, don't worry, we'll get it back. Now, let's just try and make this scene work. Um, you have no idea. Well, perhaps you do have. You, you know, you know when you're working with people and there is a bully in the office, or you know the the paranoid person who makes everyone's life miserable. Don't be that person. You know you can get far more out of people by encouragement 
than you can by saying, if you do that again, I will never, ever, and you will be fired. You know, and so for the next few minutes, the, 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 the guy is going, God, I must get fired. And he's not focusing on what he's doing. Expect perfection around yourself when you are perfect. That's what I do. So you've all got a big pass for a long time because I'm not and will never be. Be generous. And from generosity, you get the chance of greatness. Oh, no, thank you so much. That was so inspirational. Um, we're going to end it there, unfortunately. Uh, you know, uh, but thank you so wait, much. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, you had a question? Yes, for sure. I apologize. I was getting myself. That's right. Um, I could talk all day for about uh, of the kind of influence stories have had on me growing up. Um, but I want to ask you, um, what is your opinion? Like, how do you, what role do you think a story? It's a philosophical question. What role do you think storytelling play, storytelling plays? Like an average person. Um, well, we all we all love stories, and great films or great books, they all tell a great story. Actually, generally, what they do, they talk about good and evil, right and wrong. These are unfashionable content concepts in the normal world because we don't live in a wrong a world where anyone can be in any way wrong or evil, which is bullshit, of course. Um, but. Um, Storytelling is important, and if you want to be filmmakers, and I suspect that some of you do want to be filmmakers, learn to tell a story. Learn to tell a story with pictures. Learn how to use words as well. Um, and if you if you can tell us, if you find a great story, and then can tell it with pictures you will eventually build an audience. The audience is where it ends. In the beginning is the word, but the audience is where it ends. The drama's laws, the drama's patrons give. And we who live to please must please to live. Don't ever lose sight of that. It's not about your bloody vanity or this unique vision that you have. It's about looking at people and saying, I have this vision. I want you to see this. I want you to share this with me. And if they turn you down and reject you, you know, don't do it. Oh, bloody stupid people. They're too, they're too stupid for my work. My work is, you know, if you fail to communicate with people, the failure is not with them, the failure is with you. If you want to be a communicator, learn to communicate. Don't blame the audience. The audience is perverse sometimes, will drive you nuts sometimes, but it is the arbiter of work. And you will build your own audience. And the quality of that will come from the quality of the work that you do. Sorry, I'm such a pedantic old fart, aren't I? No, I don't apologize. I don't apologize. That was, that was awesome. Thank you so much. It would be nice to our uh, Kineticon because uh, we'll meet marvelous people here. I will meet marvelous people here. Um, and I'm expecting that I will meet, and I really didn't start counting them at first. But since I've started counting, I will lay money that I will meet a professional archaeologist who will come up to me and be the 195th of my calculating, who said, you know, the thing that got me first interested in archaeology was Raiders of the Lost Star. And he'll be a full professor or a professional archaeologist or a museum curator or something like that. And the next thing he'll say is, of course, we... Um, of course, we don't do things quite that way these days. <laughs> no longer the Root and Scoot school of archaeology, but something far greater. <coughs> hey, I think not. Where do they expect to find you uh, after today, right now? Well, is there any panels afterwards, or 
I don't know. I want PM. I want PM. I don't know. Don't ask me. I, 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 I. want PM. They can catch him at that panel. Um, at signatory. Uh, okay. Uh, signatory starts at one PM. I don't believe there are any panels before that. Okay. All right. One PM. You guys can catch him. All right. And good luck to you all. Thank you all so much. In all, in all your efforts, because I know that for some of you, this is the stepping stone to doing extraordinary things. And um, yeah. It's, it is belief in the dream, dreaming magnificently, but hard work. Above all, don't pursue happiness. That great constitution of yours, which I love and adore, written by the smartest Englishman of the time, we got to get that in, um, says um, the pursuit, mentions the pursuit of happiness. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Basically because he was taking it from Locke. Life, liberty, and property. And he didn't like the idea of property because of its other associations. But to pursue happiness is a wholly redundant thing. Happiness is found as a byproduct of hard work. Aristotle says that happiness comes from the pursuit of virtue, from, from, from the pursuit of virtuous activity. If you want to be happy, work hard. And uh, and if you work hard, you're happy. You'll make the world. Sorry. Oh, what an old father. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back shortly.